We wanted to show you a couple of clips recently that have come out, and we're going to explain what's going on in most of these. This is a taxi rank. Yes. Now, what they would do is the drivers come and park the taxis next to the wall overnight so that there's enough space for cars to come in and out. Except one morning, dude walks out and all of the taxis are destroyed. Can I say something that the chat was saying, which is was funny, but What's kind that? of very relevant? I'll go back, yeah. They, the people in the chat were convinced that it was like, because we put this in the thumbnail of the video. Sure. And they were convinced that it was just like maybe one, but then we just mirrored it no, no, to make no. it all the way down. No, this is all of the taxis. Yeah, basically a big, long retaining wall that was up there, you know, um, decided one day it was going to collapse yeah. <laughs> and fall on everything. Um, and yeah, this happens a lot in China, and that's because of the poor quality. We're going to explain to you why this happens uh, mm -hmm. at the end of these clips, but it's scary. What if a dude was sitting in one of those? You know, that's pretty destructive. Anyway, what we have here is a wedding dinner. Now, apparently, this, the meal was so delicious that the gods of the underworld wanted to have a bite. <laughs> because, as you can see, the table collapsed with everybody sitting around eating the meal. This is very this recent. Is the whole pit of hell opened yes, up. Yes, pretty much. Actually, there's a little bit of footage of them clambering out, this as you can see here. when you invite the devil to your wedding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? I'll have some down here, thank you. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, can you imagine you're just sitting there with your friends having a nice meal and the floor collapses and swallows you and the table up? Yeah. Well, the floor is hungry. Yeah. Now, um, a couple of the clips we're going to show you here, you may have seen before. Some of them are a little bit older. Most of them are fairly new. But this is up all the way. Well, that's a, yeah, that's a support column, a support beam, right? Ah, I see the concrete worms got to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you see, you normally don't see that part. During the construction process, they've got like a cladding around it. Mm -hmm. And then you pump the concrete in from the top, yeah. right? And then when it's dry, you take the cladding off. Yes. But they... Take so many shortcuts, and the construction material quality is so poor. And mm. then they also like, well, if we can use less of it, we save money. Right. So they just put in like a little bit. But oh, that's yikes. high up. That's like on the 15th, 16th floor up there. You don't want that's that. terrifying. No, because the apartment above this is supposed to be supported by this. You're, so you're sitting on that beam. Yeah. All the way in the sky. Your entire floor of the apartment above is going to be sitting on these beams. There's multiple of them, over, all right? But even one of them being shoddy like this could cause the whole thing to collapse. And then there's a little tremor, a little earthquake. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Imagine if someone comes to do Zhuang Xiao with a jackhammer. Yeah, a renovation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's floor not good. Floor don't lie. Yeah, exactly. Floor don't lie. Now, this one, um, wh where was this again? This is in this the... This is um, uh, Foshan. Yeah, Foshan. So in Guangdong, in the Been south. Been there. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That's where Bruce Lee's Ip Man Master is from. Yeah. If you know Ip Man. Hopefully not from this building. No, but this was supposed to be a luxury building complex. And mm. so... What happens is, we've talked about this a lot in the past, when people, they invest in these things and then they break ground, they take a long time to get done. The first batch of apartments was delivered to the customers. Yes. And this is what they found, the first customer. So imagine you've spent like a million US dollars on your yeah. apartment, and this is what you get. That's the wall. Yeah. Yeah, the guy's like, what kind of a wall is this? Yeah. That's what he's saying in Chinese. <laughs> and that's the wall, the, the floor. Yeah, just a couple of shots of like, you know, the poor uh, <laughs> manufacturing quality here, the shortcuts. Yeah, I know. The thing is, you bought an apartment in Guangdong, mm. not far away from here. Yeah. Um, Falling apart, too. Yeah. I mean, pretty much every every new construction I've seen in China before I left was like really bad. Yeah. It was bad. <clears throat> yes, very bad. Over here, um, we had a, a strong wind, right? Where was this? 
This is uh, this was in it doesn't say. Oh uh, yeah, it does. This is in Changchun and Jilin, yeah. north, northern China. Yeah. That says a lot of vehicles are damaged. Yeah. Lots of vehicles are damaged because that cladding always falls off. Yeah, that is a thing that they don't glue on very well. It's because <laughs> glue it on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are they using? Like wood glue? No, or just glue. They're, They're using yeah, like glue. the the glue stick from school. So it's school. Borrow it from their ch child's backpack. You have, yes. You know. Yes, <laughs> They're like, let's yes. glue it on. But no, seriously, when it comes to that it's not hard to make it stick properly you just have to use the right kind of concrete screening you have the yeah. right kind of materials and you have to apply it correctly mm. but because shortcuts are taken inferior materials are used well again it's not just shortcuts it's well it ultimately does boil down to shortcuts but like there are there's a very specific reason this is happening and it's it sounds stupid and crazy but we really think it is part of part and parcel part of what's happening mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, you'll see. Okay, now we showed last week from a very zoomed in angle what happened here. So you guys know what's going to happen. This is that wedding that we showed you last oh, we week. We got a different video. We got a better HDR caught in 4K. <laughs> not um, 4K. Well, nothing coming out of China's 4K. This is shit 80p. Yeah, it's always shit 80p. But what I'd like you to pay attention to is the fact that the um, pillar. It's not freestanding, it's attached to the wall. Yeah, because I thought it was freestanding. Mm, let's take a look at what happens here, guys. Oh, oh, Jenga. I mean, that's quite spectacular for it to be attached to a freaking wall <laughs> and still fall down. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. IRL Jenga. Yeah, here we have another massive sinkhole, which is common. All the time. Yeah. But it's not just there. Swing the camera, and it's there too. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Okay, um, now this is what you'll find in a lot of cities. You, you have these like um, bushingjie is what it's called, mm -hmm. which basically means walking street mm -hmm. areas. They're very popular. I always used to like to go to these places in the small cities and the big cities too, but it'll be an area where there are a lot of little shops, a lot of street food, or yep. little fashion shops, things like that. And it's always very vibey, all right? This particular place, where was it? There's a, I, did, I did make a note. Yeah, it's this up. This is the, go, no, oh, go it's up. Up. sorry. Oh, is it? Yeah, there we uh, go. Taif the Isle of Taifu Shopping Mall. Okay, the Taifu Shopping Mall, all right. Anyway, you go to these Bushingjies, and this is like an overhead walkway bridge thing, which just collapsed. Um, as I'm sure you know, that's not very safe. Especially since it is a place that's got a lot of people walking around. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so, you know, very, very hazardous. People on the bridge can fall down. People underneath the bridge could have that fall on them. I mean, this is the problem I have is that like China's doing outsourcing all these construction projects to other countries right now, and people are gobbling them up. And it's yeah. like, what are you doing? You know, it, it's also incredibly... I, I don't know how to put this, but it's so immoral the way these things are dealt with in yeah, China yeah. because they try to hide it. They mm -hmm. don't release the casualty numbers. They're mm -hmm. always like no information on the casualties or mm -hmm. there were no casualties. But there's no way there were no casualties in a situation like this. It's a walking street area. There are thousands of people there, you know? And here's the thing. Uh, you have to think about it in this, this particular way, too. You have to get serious about it, okay? We're both fathers. We have kids. This is the kind of place your wife and kid would go shopping, right? Go get some street food. Go try on some new shoes for the kid. I don't want my kid walking under a bridge that's going to collapse on her head. Mm -mm. You know, or like a hollow beam building. Exactly. It's <clears throat> it's so unsafe. But the problem is, when we go out in public, we put our trust in the engineers and the architects and the Contractor. construction workers and the contractors who build these things. We put our trust in them. Oh shit. Because yeah. Our families' lives are literally at stake. But mm. in China, you cannot trust any building, no matter how fancy it is, no matter how new it is, because there's so much evidence of these things just falling down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the problem. It can look fancy. It can have LED lights all over and it and night. shiny. Yeah. <laughs> at night. Yeah, Always. exactly. Always at night, because yeah, you don't get to see the pollution in the, you know, from the day. Like this. <laughs> yes, that sky is pretty gross. Anyway, um, that's that one. Let's move on to... Let's move on to the next one. This um, <laughs> is the dude who took this video. It's his neighbor's apartment. Okay. 
Um, and the roofs just collapse like this. This is my neighbor's house suddenly collapsed. Yeah. I was so scared that I decided to sell it and buy another one. Is this familiar to you? Yes. Yeah. Can happened. you tell that story quickly? This ha the, yeah, I don't have to. This happened in my apartment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, good moving on. Yes, destroyed your TV. <laughs> yes. The plaster fell over your on friend's head who was sleeping over. Yeah. And on your cat. Yes. But the, the interesting thing is, I remember, because I visited you right after, yeah. it didn't happen in your bedroom. No. It happened in your living room and the guest room. That's right. So you didn't even know because you were sleeping, no, right? No in, in the morning, you woke Everything up to a war zone. In powder. <laughs> yeah. It looked like this. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it was uh, like really bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah. Okay. What's this? This is an indoor swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now swimming pools uh, have actually become very popular amongst kind of retirees. Yes, All very right? much so. Swimming's really had a boom. In yeah, it's recently. kind of interesting because um, there is a problem with swimming illiteracy in China, mm -hmm. if yeah, you can put it sure. that way. Like for people, sure. most people that I met of my age mm -hmm. and younger couldn't swim in China. Right. You know, when I used to teach in China, when I used to train people, one of the questions I'd always ask the class is, can you swim? yeah, can you swim? And in a class of say like 30, 40 people, maybe one person would put their mm -hmm. hand up. It's just, I guess it's because China is landlocked a lot of it, you know, unless you live on the coast and even though there are rivers and stuff. People are very averse to letting their kids go near water and yeah. so on. So and that's changed. It's yeah. it has changed, but especially amongst the elder people. Yes. So this is an indoor swimming pool where they go do their exercise and swimming. Yeah, this is in Zhengzhou, so it's like central China. Yeah. And the roof started to collapse here. People are like, yeah, maybe we should get out of here. I don't know. Probably a good idea. Mm. <laughs> This guy's a accent. Real mumble. Yeah. Real Hunan mumble. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. That really just came down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is recent. Yeah, fairly recent. So you can see from the roof there. Yeah, it um, says three people died. Well, not in the footage, though. No, no, we wouldn't show that. But, you know, this is, again, imagine you're just like you're an older dude or whatever or older woman. You're going for your afternoon exercise by swimming in the indoor pool, and the roof falls down on you. Yeah. It's kind of nightmarish. It is. That very much is. Mm. Yeah. Again. How about this dude? So this says uh, the exterior wall of the 24th floor is cracked. So this is on the 24th floor. Uh, the wall is crumbling and actually lets the light in. Mm -hmm. The owners complain that the developers are, are responsible for this. This is in uh, Changsha and Hunan in southern China. Yeah, so again, we're pointing out that all of these places are all around China. It's not, yes. it's not one of those like, oh, Flint, Michigan has bad water and you yeah. can pinpoint no, one area. This is the whole this country. Is, all of China has this problem, yeah. okay? It's endemic. It's everywhere. So now this is on the dude's balcony. Can you imagine you're on the 24th floor and you walk onto your balcony and you see this crack in your wall? I'd probably not want to stand on that balcony. Holy crap. Because, <laughs> you know, wow, it's like, <laughs> yeah, dude, mm, not very good. No good. We did show this one before. But again, this just shows how badly the cladding is attached it's to the building. It's heavy too. This is not like card. It's tiles. Yeah, it's yeah. tiles. It's tiles and cement and what have you. Look at that. This is what you're living in. Yeah, oh and gosh. under. This also is um, something that is incredibly concerning because these are supposed to be the safety guardrails mm -hmm. to prevent people and children or whatever you know they haven't finished putting it together yet sure. but it's supposed to like protect you from falling off this very tall building but they're not even properly anchored in this in the cement they're in like a, a centimeter look at that wow, just yeah. pull it out by hand imagine you go and lean against that yeah and this we showed before but this is an example of that this guy yeah. you know he's doing this spider-man ac installation Amazing. and it almost caused him to fall because look, he grabbed on and the whole yeah. thing came out. And yeah. he said if, if he wasn't wearing his safety harness, he would have fallen. Of course. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's just a little scary. <clears throat> so um, what about this next one that we have here? 
This one here is uh, at the Dongguan Expo Plaza overpass. Mm. Uh, the overpass collapsed. This is in southern China, very wealthy city. Dongguan, yeah, we know it well. We've been there many times. Yeah, it's near nearby where we lived. It mm. says a loud bang was like an earthquake. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole like. Tianqiao, as they call it, or sky bridge, or basically walkway, collapsed. You can see it, um, how it was attached between the two buildings. So it would have been an elevated walkway in between the two. Um, there's a good shot of it. I'll just pause it so you can see. Okay, so you can see it's on the ground now. Okay. Um, this is us giving you views on the ground in China. <laughs> um, and you can see it was high up there. You yeah. can see where the roof used yeah. to be. And the whole thing just sheared off and fell down. Again, anyone that was under there, anyone that was walking on there is tickets for you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Again, like this is, you have to put your trust in these public spaces, but in China, you can't. No. It's rough, you know? No. Yeah. So as you can see. It's like, I feel like I'm watching war footage here. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah. Now this was the highway between... Where was it? Uh, this was the highway uh, between Lhasa and Beijing. So oh, that's a that's the whole country. That's a <laughs> very long highway. And anyway, it's between Tibet and Beijing. So yeah. west to east. We've show, we've shown footage before on this channel where people are just driving along and suddenly like there's no road and there's they go no like road. Yes, yeah, it's absolutely. It's, it's a horror. It's terrifying movie. because imagine you're riding at night on this highway. Even during the day, you're not going to spot that. You'll think it's a little expansion joint or something. By the time you get close enough, it's too late. Wow. Either that or you've got a Dukes of Hazard it over that thing. <laughs> I think you there's no I mean? ramp. You're Smokey and the Bandit, that stuff. There's no ramp. Well, then you could just be like in speed where there was no ramp, but they still ramped the bus. Any physics uh, people in the, <laughs> in the chat right now, tell us how fast you'd have to be going to be able to go over this without falling in. Yes. Probably like 300 miles an hour. More than that, I'm yeah. guessing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, ooh, that's nasty. Mm. Yeah, I think more than, than 300 miles an hour. Well, that's, well, that's impossible. That's like, not, it's not possible, to, yeah. unless, unless you had a ramp. You can yeah. evil can evil over that. For sure. Yeah. Oof, rough. My goodness gracious. Yeah. Again, we're going to come to the... Remember that the title of this is Nothing is Safe in China. Now we know why. We're coming to that conclusion. Yeah, we're coming to it. Again, sinkholes... That's happening. got like rushing like waves in there. It's like its own ecosystem in there. A lot of the times, the cause of these sinkholes is burst pipes under the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, under the road, what am I saying? Under the water. Everything will be under the water <laughs> because the pipes, when they're building the metro stations are doing the underground plumbing, this actually swallowed a car. That's in Liaoning, you can see. Yeah. There we go. Oh, Boom. And it goes. It went like this. Yeah. Um, how true. Yeah, exactly. And how, how true. Where is that? How true. <laughs> how, how true. Anyway, so the whole thing is uh, these pipes, they burst. They're poorly constructed underground. And then this rushing water just hollows out all the sand and all the earth and all the stuff underneath the roads yeah. and it causes these sinkholes. And they're very common as well. Another hazard to worry about when you're driving around or sometimes just standing on the sidewalk. You we know? actually had someone in the chat earlier mm -hmm. that said uh, this is also the sinkholes in China are the cause uh, because of the depletion of the water table as well, mm, which would make too. a lot of sense. Yeah. So anyway, a clip we've shown once before, mm -hmm. but the reason I'm showing this to you all, or we're showing this to you all again, is there's another clip which is the same type of thing which we want to show you. But... These guys on a construction site, actual construction workers were all having a laugh because they found out that their tape measures didn't match. None of their tape measures matched. Now, does it not make a lot of sense as to why you just watched 20 minutes of shit falling down? Does it not make sense if the most... I mean, look at the distance between yes, that that's 40 inches here, 40 inches there. There's like... 10 inches off or three inches off or something. It doesn't matter <laughs> what the architect came up with at that yeah, point. It yeah. doesn't matter what the blueprints say and at that point. Here's a spoiler, by the way. You know all these skyscrapers and stuff in China? I'd say about 90% of them are foreign architects mm -hmm. uh, have designed them. They're not Chinese designs. So when you see these impressive skylines and China's like, look at our amazing cities... It's kind of like, yeah, someone it else depends, designed it for you. It depends on the building, but yeah. Yes, but I'm just saying 90% of these big things that yeah, you see. Like I don't in, know the statistic, in my yes. In my guesstimation, okay, okay I could be wrong, but every time I look it up, you see those like in Shanghai, those big sure. buildings? It's far enough, like Dutch right. or whatever, you know? Now, the, the point I'm trying to make here is it doesn't matter who mm. designed it. Yes. It doesn't matter who drew the blueprints. Do nope. you know what matters? If the most basic measurements on the ground when you're putting things together mm -hmm. are off by an inch every time, 
yes. or many different distances because your measuring tapes that you're using to construct are off? Does that not make so much sense? Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and this shows the real root cause of it because it's not just measuring tapes, it's everything. You know, the first time I really learned about this is I've got a very good friend and he runs a calibration company. And I'd never heard of that before. Sure. But uh, he's off in out in Arizona and basically all of the aerospace companies, all of the, anything to do with helicopters and airplanes and even mechanics, mm -hmm. you know, like a mechanic shop, they have to, by law, to meet regulations, they have to have their tools calibrated. So he's got a lab and what happens is He'll drive around, you know, staff will drive around in, in, a, in a van and they'll go to all these places, pick up their like torque wrenches and their little calipers and all their measuring stuff, take it to the lab and they put it on machines, make sure that it's actually talking to spec, make sure it's within tolerances. It's very, very short tolerances. And so this is also for electronic equipment and stuff, but every tool in these big companies and for these uh, mechanics and construction companies and stuff have to be calibrated. And it's by law, it's very strict standards. In China, there's no such thing. It's just chabador. This is a new picture, which again, mirrors what we've just seen in that, that video, which was from a year ago, I believe. But this is a new picture of someone else who bought a bunch of random tapes, measuring tapes and lined them up. And as you can see, not one of them matches. All right, so imagine you're on the construction site and you're told, okay, space the rebar like one foot apart, you know? So you're doing it here, he's doing it there. But then this side of the building, the rebar's maybe like one foot, three inches apart. And on his one, it's less than a foot. So it's all higgledy-piggledy all over the place. It's not going to be good construction. Nope. It's not going to be up to code. It's just kind of guesswork at that point. When everything from the very top to the very bottom measuring device is wrong, yes. what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, exactly. It's obvious. This is... Again, we're using the measuring tapes as an example of like from the very bottom of it, the, mm -hmm. the rung. But it's all the way through the construction process that there's corruption and weird stuff going on. So we've got something else to talk about here. Not just measuring tapes. <laughs> and we got a solid example of this. Hang on a sec. Now, this was in Hernan. There was a school. This happened um, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But this was a good example as to what we're talking about. There was a school. Yeah. You, you've got a thing about it. I'll just I'll um, kind of introduce it, and you can read sure. the rest of it. But there's a school in Hernan, and they were building a four-story dormitory for the students. Again, yes. we're talking about children's lives here. Yeah. Okay, lives. And, yeah, their lives <laughs> of the children. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Anyway, so we're dealing with the lives of children here. We're going to build a dormitory for. I think it's a middle school, right? Mm -hmm. So they ordered. What was it, 25 tons? 30? 25 tons of cement. I'll just throw yeah, it back go to for you. It. No, no, yeah, you can yeah. tell them. So, about 25 it. tons of cement they ordered from a company, a construction company. Yes. Okay. Oh, but they went through a third party vendor. Yes. So, this is what happens is the construction company that has a decent reputation in the area, mm -hmm. rather than make the stuff themselves, mm -hmm. which they would normally do, in order to make money and not actually do any actual work, they just subcontracted it to a third party. Yeah. So, they go to like some, some guys in the bush somewhere. And they're like, it's just a man in a bush. Just like some man sitting in a bush on the side of the road. And they're like, hey, <laughs> like think you can man. make some concrete for us? Yeah. You know? it, it may as well be. Yeah. They subcontracted to some random unknown company. Yeah. Okay. And they produced the 25 tons of cement to build this thing. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they caught it very early on because when they started construction of this dormitory, they noticed that the material would just crumble when you touched it. And Turns out that it wasn't strong enough to even, you know, hold the foundations of this building. It's like when it was tested, there's no way it could even hold a four-story four building. You know, it was impossible. But they caught it early, mm -hmm. and then they actually um, reported it and got the company shut down. Yeah. Which is a rare case, but it shows you just how common this kind of thing is. For sure. Because everybody's trying to make a buck. It's this, like, Russian doll situation. You've got the main company on the outside who then subcontracts to another company who takes shortcuts and uses cheaper quality materials from there. And, you know, until you get to the bottom and the person that's actually making the thing is earning nothing and they've got no incentive to, make, to do a good job, right? You're right. And then the guy at the top's making big bucks and he gets his big check and he's like, yay, here's your stuff. And that's how it works. So it's that combined with the absolute slipshot manner in which things are measured and done and implemented that leads to all these tofu construction, uh, tofu dray construction things that fall down. We wanted to remind you of this, okay? 
Can you just tell everybody what where we, we were? We're in Guangdong in a luxury villa area. These mm. were millions of dollars. Yes. They were three years old. Three we years old. We went to go see what they were like after three years of construction. This yes. is what we found. I'll show you very quickly. Don't worry, it's not Anyone long. who's any kind of a construction person is going to look at this and say, like, what the actual hell is Yeah, these is were done. These are done. Hey, guys, I just wanted yeah. to welcome you to a new uh, episode of Cribs here. Wanted to show you out uh, one of my new, my new places. I have many homes, but this is just my newest one, as you can see. Beautiful separate villa here in China. Very, very expensive. So we can see the, uh, the barbed wire here, I think, adds a nice little touch. Nice little, little pizzazz. Uh, this is the beacon that kind of guides me home, you know, when I park the Bentley in the driveway. Uh, very good stuff. Beautiful little Roman type pillars here. And I got the razor wire touch as well. I thought that kind of. Uh, I love the really bricks all missing inside. I love the razor wire. It shows kind of you like edge what's edge. necessary in China. Uh, the speaking land of oh, edges. There's no crime. Why, yes. is this, <laughs> yeah. why is this edge not lining oh, dude, up? Why are you trying to embarrass me? Well, <laughs> before we continue, I just wanted to point out the construction quality that's going on here. Sure. Uh, a little earlier, I was messing around with this just because, and you know, you can pull it apart by hand, and it's actually got wood inside. Look at that, it's wood. Or at least some kind of, I'm not quite sure if it's twine or wood or fiberglass or whatever, but this is not a very sturdy structure. And as you can see, half the tiles have fallen off, and it's. I want to give, I want. You know, the more I look at this old footage that we took, and we, we took this, what, about 2018 or so? Yeah. Okay. Remember, this place is three years old. It was completed three years before we filmed this, okay? And it costs like a million plus dollars this for one so of these. Expensive. It's super expensive. The more I look at it, the more bad it gets. Because, yeah. you know, like this chunk missing out of yeah. this thing, you know, you see all the tiles have come off, just like the cladding falls off the you buildings. Can you give them more details of this yeah. place before I tell them how old it is? Okay. Well, I mean, we can look around and, and you can just look at thing, uh, that. I have no idea. <laughs> but... But if you take a look at the wall behind it, all the tiles have come loose and fallen off. Look at the inside, dude. Come here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that rear wall. Yeah. Are you even joking right I mean, now? The stuff basically made of carbon. Okay. So what you're looking at here, by the way, is a fake shop. Yes. What they would do in these apartment complexes in order to like bring investors in is they'd set up like a ground level shops all around the outside. Mm. Going around the outside, you know, around the outside. <laughs> um, so that kind of like people think, oh, this is going to be cool. Like we'll buy the villa in the in the middle, mm -hmm. and then there'll be shops on the outside. But of course, they never get populated. At first, they're just fake, and then they get rid of the signs. But if you look inside there, you can see the back walls cracked all the way up. Yeah, like a massive crack in it. Again, mm. expensive luxury villa complex, three years old. That the, the entire wall looks like it's about to collapse back there. Yeah. Man, look at those. Oh man, just look at those, whatever they are, cornices, buttresses, whatever you call those things. They're just falling apart. I actually feel unsafe being here, dude. Like, it, shit could fall off and hit us in the well, head. I mean, look at that. that. That's just like a hollow tube that's got a piece of wire holding it together. It's Yeah, I mean, look at that. They make a framework out of, like, coat hanger wire or something, and then put something over it so it looks like it's concrete. Imagine you're a thief, right? And you're climbing up this wall. <laughs> it's great detail. And you're like, this is a great handhold. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> it's That's like, a, it. and then you you suspend for like three seconds because it's a cartoon. Yeah, and, and you, you just pew. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh boy. Yeah. So we thought that this was a great <laughs> example of what happens in the construction yes. industry, <laughs> even though this is not story. the construction construction industry. Okay, hesitant hitman jailed over botched assassination in China. Okay, so this is from 2019, right? But it's a great. It's a but great, this, uh, this is such a good yes. analogy yes. for the construction industry. Or anything. Yeah. So a group of hitmen have been jailed after repeatedly trying to subcontract a job to each other in Guangxi, China. Okay? <laughs> I, I love this story. It just makes well, me chuckle best. every time. So businessman Tan Yo Hui hired a hitman to take out his competitor for $282,000, a court heard. Big money. But the hitman hired another man to do the job, offering 141000 Less money. That, ma that man hired another hitman who hired another hitman who hired another hitman. I love how many there were. <laughs> hitman has lost its luster, that word. Yeah, exactly. Too many hitmen. It's ridiculous. The plan crumbled when the final hitman met the man <laughs> named only his way in a cafe and proposed faking his death. <laughs> All six men, the five hitmen and Tan, were convicted of attempted murder by the court in Nanning, Guangxi, following a trial that lasted three years. Um... Spoiler, they didn't get much. I think the, the 
the maximum one of them got was like three years in jail. We'll see. Let's read this whole thing. Do you want to read this part? The saga of the subcontracted hitman dates back to professional dispute in 2013 when Mr. White took legal action against Tan's firm. Scared of losing money fighting a lengthy court case, Tan contacted a hitman and offered him 2 million RMB, which is 282,000 to kill Mr. Wei. Uh, she accepted the job, but shortly afterwards asked another hitman, Mo, Mo to yeah. kill Mr. Wei instead, offering him 1 million RMB. After Mo accepted, she rene- renegotiated with Tan to pay another 1 million yuan after the killing. But Mo, in, in turn, contacted another man, Yang, who agreed to carry out the killing for another upfront for an upfront fee of 270,000 RMB and another 500,000 to be paid afterwards. Yang then offered another hitman, Yang, 200,000 to assassinate Mr. Wei with a bonus of 500,000 after the completion. And finally, the chain came to an end when Yang offered the fi- a fifth hitman, Ling, 100,000 RMB to kill Mr. Wei. So it's gone from 2 million down to 100,000. Yeah. So you see, this is the same in the construction industry. It's the same. You get the, the person who wants to pay for the good quality goods and they give the real money, but the person who actually ends up making and delivering those goods gets the least amount of money. Top guy could have yeah. had a high quality murder here, ended up with a real Chabudua half assed murder. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's see how this all unraveled. Instead of carrying out the murder, Ling met up with Mr. Wei in a cafe, told him there was a hit on him, and proposed a plan. The two of them would fake the murder. Ah. Mr. Wei agreed to pose, gagged and bound for a photo that Ling could take back to Young before later reporting the case to the police. So he's like, okay, fine, I'll go along with it. And then he goes to the police like, what the hell, you know, I just had to pose gagged and bound. The case initially went to trial in 2016, but the six defendants were acquitted due to a lack of evidence. Prosecutors appealed against the decision, and the second trial lasted three years. Tan, who hired the original hitman, was sentenced to five years in prison. Okay, so five years was the max. Mm. Imagine that. You literally hire somebody to kill someone and you get five years in prison. Yeah. Well, they didn't pull it off. Yeah, but still, it's yeah. not a very lengthy sentence. Sure. Um, <clears throat> okay. While she, the first hitman, was sentenced to three years and six months. So a hitman who's like an admitted hitman, he was hired as a hitman, who hired another hitman, who hired another hitman, who hired another hitman, who hired another hitman. It's a dude. But he's a dude. Yeah, playing a dude disguised as another dude. He is a hitman. He's literally a hitman. He got three years. Hey, I'm a I'm a professional hitman. I agreed to kill someone for money. Okay, three years in prison is good enough for you. Isn't that a bit weird? So let's see. Uh, Tan who hired uh, the original. Okay, we got that. Um, young and young uh, Kangsheng young and young, and young uh, Guangsheng were sentenced to three years and three months. Mo was sentenced to three years, and Ling was sentenced to two years and seven months. Okay, so Timu so, got two. Yeah, basically yeah. two years and seven months for the, the Timu hitman at the back. Isn't it just crazy, though? It is. It's such a China thing. So that hitman story explains why tofu dregs exist. Yeah, It is true. the most definitive way that we can bring across to you why buildings and bridges and, and so measures. on fall down. Yeah. yeah. And the down, tape measures too. Down all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, Makes absolutely. Sense. From the yeah. top to the bottom. This is entertainment. Both of them look supremely entertained. He chucks it out of there. He threw a nut at my face. Oh, never mind. It was actually because it was deemed too ugly. Then again, if they made it accurate, it would be even uglier. $21,000 for that thing that looks like somebody made as a project <laughs> in wood shop. What and is he <laughs> wearing? <laughs> he had stockings. That's, That's like a fleur de, fleur de puke. You know what I mean? It's literally like a French nobleman threw up and then they like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What on earth is going on? That's like weird, dude. <laughs> Bury the dog in your backyard, yeah. yes, but to make a pillow out of its skin? That's horrendous. No, no. Are you not entertained?